Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are docking in and reviewing one of Kyrosoft's most impressive games to date, Dreamtown Island. Dreamtown Island is an incredibly ambitious Kyrosoft game that took the community by storm in 2023, winning the Fanbase Game of the Year award. So what makes this title so special? Let's jump into my review of Dreamtown Island and answer the question, is this Kyrosoft's best game ever made? Dreamtown Island is one of Kyrosoft's largest games ever released and translated into English, being the 66 iOS and Android English game available from Kyrosoft, not to be confused with the similarly named Dreamtown Story and Dreamhouse Days. Dreamtown Island was released two days apart on Android and iOS in June 2023 and later ported to Steam in November 2023. Modern Kyrosoft games now have minimum port delays between the two mobile versions and are even being ported to Steam at a much faster rate. 2023 was a fantastic year for Kyrosoft games, with a great deal of polish and gameplay enhancements being added to their modern library, providing a truly upgraded feel in comparison to their earlier titles. Dreamtown Island in particular sets a new standard of Kyrosoft games, almost like a generational leap from their older titles, with cleaner UI, more snappy gameplay and a huge library of content to discover. Let's depart and set sail for our island building adventure, naming our island Bows Downtown and get stuck right into why this game is considered one of Kyrosoft's finest. Immediately when starting, you get the option to name your first villager, as standard with most Kyrosoft games. Let's go ahead and name him Anita Max Win and let him loose to explore their future home on Bows downtown. I need big things from you, Mr. Maxwin. Your story is going to be carved into the history of Bows downtown's history books as a Max winner. Dreamtown Island is essentially a blend of two fantastic previous Kyrosoft games. Venture Towns, which I've previously done a review on on my channel, check it out at the top right hand corner of this video or after this video if you haven't seen it already, and Dreamhouse Days. Venture Towns pits you in charge of growing a small town all the way up to a bustling city, managing all of the business, layouts and movement of the residents. Whereas Dream House Days is more focused on the residents themselves, allowing you to manage their life choices including their love interests, marriage arrangements and even having their own babies. Dream Town Island takes the best mechanics of both of these games and ramps them up into overdrive. Seriously, the amount of content in this title is unlike anything previously offered in a grid layout management Kyrosoft game. There are over a hundred combos alone to discover, countless buildings to unlock, and even a super in-depth gardening system when you can unlock a huge variety of flowers and plants to add to your island. Hmm, a squash seed. I wonder what this will turn into. A squash, perhaps? Maybe a pumpkin? Let's check it out. A boulder plant? You're telling me I just grew a boulder from this seed? A living rock? Thwomps are real? Hmm. I guess anything is possible at Bows Downtown. In the beginning, there is a lot you can look into progressing. You can build new housing lots for more residents to move in, customize the island layout by adding in new facilities, transportation and plant decorations to spruce it up to your liking, and also track the residents and their relationships. One of the most important aspects of the game is the town hall. When you place this structure, you can actually click into it to bring up a list of requests that can be researched. I really like that you're able to interact with the building and bring open the town request menu, alongside being able to open it in a standard manner in the settings menu. It feels a lot more immersive and grounded into the game. Great addition. There are also resident requests that unfortunately have to only be opened in the menu as far as I could tell, so it'd be great if in a later game these are also managed in a similar building structure like the town hall. The town hall is truly one of the most important buildings in the game, as it enables you to research and uncover new buildings, solve town requests, expand your island size, and meet certain special characters. The layout designing and customization is extremely fleshed out in this game. You can now even alter the elevation of buildings and facilities, to test this out, I tried raising a ground panel to the max, and I was shocked to see that my villagers barely phased by over it, just hurtling over a mountain on their way to work. No worries. Sorry I'm two minutes late, boss. You wouldn't believe it. My street was raised to a level higher than my own roof, but I had my good rock climbing shoes and chalk on me, so no worries. As you uncover more businesses and add them into your island, you can actually purchase stocks in the businesses you have built, which can provide some extra events to happen. Alongside customizing the island layout and unlocking new buildings to progress, there is a whole host of gameplay features relating to your island residents. Seriously, the amount of things to look at here is amazing. Each resident has their own unique dream job which they desire to have, 
They will have relationships with the other residents and also do competitions where they try to negotiate and impress judges. I'm going to have to bring in my right hand man Anita Max Wynn for this negotiation. I have on good authority that man could sell sand to Australians. He's that persuasive. Hmm, looks like the negotiations are going mediocre. I'm going to have to pull out the big guns and do a party trick. Take that! Oh, would you look at that? They're absolutely loving it. There is no better way to land a job than to whip out your party tricks during the interview. That's always going to make a great first impression. You're, You're fired. fired! You're, You're hired. hired! You're, You're fired! fired. Alongside managing your villagers' jobs, you can also manage their partners, which they can muster up the courage to ask someone out. Well, looky here, we have our first romance blossoming. Here it goes, Neil Allen wants to ask out Jessica Colbert. In this game, you can actually select and pay money to change the scenery for where they do their grand proposal at. Let's select the beach vacation for Neil here and success! Just don't ask Neil how their neighbour's Justin Atkins proposal went to Anne Bird. It's not always smooth sailing in these island tides. Hey buddy, you should totally go for it. Just propose in your house to set the expectations there. No need for a fancy beach proposal. You have to make sure she sees you for you, not the beach setting. What's the worst she could say? I'm so sorry, he's just sitting in his house with all of his social battery drained and not leaving. It's been a really rough day. If the proposal doesn't initially go well, you can pull out a drastic last second attempt. This villager transformed into a cupid to swoon over their lover and it worked. My favourite interaction is when they transform into a thief and attempt to steal the user's heart. Hmm, sounds familiar. We're not the ones sending a card this time. In fact, we've been invited. But it's hilarious to see when the second proposal still gets rejected. Uh, what do you mean, man? She dressed into a thief and tried to steal your heart. That's a lot of extra effort. You've got to give her credit for that. For this villager, they attempted, and I quote, to use flattery, and I'll just let this play for itself. Yeah, uh, they strip down to their bikini and tell them that they should be the president. Let's go on a date. Wow, it worked. That was a hell of a last second chance move. I feel like if the roles were reversed here and a guy got rejected and they just started ripping off their shirt and shorts and just started flexing, yeah, they're getting pepper sprayed. Seriously, these proposals lead to some hilarious and juicy details. You could write a novel from everything that happens here. I mean, just check out Justin West that must stop the courage to ask out Iris Wilde, not only once, but twice receiving two individual painful rejection messages. Not in a million years is just so unnecessary. What the flip, Iris? Then later on, Iris who rejected him asks him out and then he rejects her saying let's just be friends. Well, he lives by his own motto, never let the West settle for anything but the best. This game has so many connections between each of the villages and their stories, it pretty much constructs a novel's worth of material each day in playthrough, it's amazing. There is no better game to just simply relax and watch as your villagers go about their daily movements, especially with this game's new building toggle feature, which allows you to see both the interior and the exterior of the buildings with a switch of the button. All of the design in this game is a significant step above previous titles while still retaining that signature Kairosoft charm. A great example of this is the notification sequence when someone important wants to speak to you. I just love how they slide in so casually and they're just like, sup, hello. If you run into financial issues, luckily our prince friend will help us out not only once, but twice. But if you run into it a third time, well, look who it is. It's Kyrobot. Thanks for playing the game. So wholesome. No, thank you, Kyrobot, for helping me out in my very dire financial situation. What have you got for me here? He gave me 16 gold. <laughs> no way, he didn't even give me enough to get out my negative 60 gold. That's hilarious. I love Kyrosoft's signature humor. It's great to see it still prevalent in all their new titles. Speaking of the design, I really love that some of the buildings have animated designs too. Just check out this aquarium. Look at those penguins bop around. Masterpiece. I could look at this all day. Another great example of the updated design is the notification system. Initially, most of the notifications will pop up full screen, which you will have to click through to proceed, such as when your villager decides their new hobby. I love this feature. My favourite hobbies that I saw was when my villager suddenly decided that pets are their lives now, and this person devolved into getting converted into a sweaty gamer. There's no turning back now, my friend. This will be your hobby for life. Just one more game. Just one more game. After you get shown the unique hobby once, later on the next notifications will appear as a text message at the top right of the screen, not requiring you to pause and see each one. It's a great way to keep the game chugging along with less interactions constantly stopping the game. This game also introduces council meetings to discuss approving new buildings. Check out this one, we need an area to rest. Ha, I think I know this one, perhaps 
a hotel, a motel, a holiday inn, per chance, a park. Wow, I was not expecting that. Looks like the housing prices and inflations are hitting hard in Bowes downtown too. We need to build this park ASAP for kids to play in and have adults pitching up their tents to survive. It's even possible for the council not to pass ideas if your villager stats aren't high enough. For some reason, the most controversial proposal in my playthrough for my island was a hammock? Okay, these hammocks are just so dangerous these days, they're not built like they used to be. You never know where you might fall off 0.5 meters and sprain your ankle. You can also level up your villager stats by giving them items. Villagers also have their individual rank, which you can level up all the way to S tier. So now let's talk about the unique features in this game. Unique Kairosoft quirks are plentiful in this title with all of the favorites returning. There is a massive list of over 150 combos to discover, which is fantastic for replayability. There is also a new way to see what buildings are combos represented by this icon while building. This is a lifesaver. This reduces spending hours trying to guess what combos are and really helps for adding in combos to your existing layout without changing much. All right, let's check out this new store I got here, Fortune Teller. Well, I'll have to see what this store combos with on my island and... Shooting gallery? This is not a good sign. It's great to see that aura is a return in this game. Villagers can get auras throughout their everyday lives and use them to boost their stats. I like that they're even shown during the committee meetings. These people are just so pumped to deny the new hammock. A brand new Kairosoft quirk introduced in this game is the gardening mechanic. Throughout your playthrough, you may see random glittery areas on the map which are seeds and other materials being collected by birds, which you can claim. You can then use these seeds to grow unique plant decoration blocks, which you can place throughout your island. And like everything else in this game, there is a huge list to go through. This is one of my favorite aspects of the game, as it is super fun trying to collect all of the hidden plant types. It adds a lot of depth to collecting in this title. This game also has the return of Mega Mall Stories Fever Quirk. Oh yeah, it's fever time, baby. Ugh, I'm coming down with a cold, I don't think I can go out today. It's fever time, I've got a shop. As the game progresses, you'll work towards fulfilling rank up requirements in typical Kairosoft style. This is the primary focus of the game. You'll have four tasks to complete. Once fulfilled, you can rank up your island and expand the land further and unlock new facilities. The land layout for this game is really fantastic. I really enjoyed seeing how the land layout is going to look after each rank up requirement is fulfilled and how I will adjust my island to suit it. I love the mystery element to it. You can see a rough idea of the expansion areas, but when you purchase each of the land, the shapes, rivers, and structures are all random, providing a really organic island feeling. It's fantastic and true to the game theme. Returning from previous titles, there is also a building value competition where you have to raise the land value of your most valuable buildings and compete for the number one spot. Alongside the land value aspect of the buildings, there is also a comfort value for your housing. This aspect is really important for a lot of the rank up requirements. I was struggling for a long time on a certain rank up as I didn't bother to invest in new road types, which are fundamental for progression in this game. I also didn't realize you could actually replace the ground type underneath an existing house. So while I was struck desperately adding in new houses to increase my island's comfort level, all I had to do was upgrade the road underneath the existing houses. So an important tip for this game, like real life islands, don't forget road upgrades. You can also get a rainbow road upgrade which increases your villager's speed. On top of progressing through the ranking contests, there are a lot of unique villager interactions that happen when you progress throughout the game. If a couple has been together long enough, they can get married at the church. This is a great aspect of the game and you can even choose which family maiden name they will continue using. But let's get down to the crux of the issue here. What family house is going to give me more value and comfort? We're going with that. Sorry, Gordon Freeman. Your last name is truly free now, man. You're a cane man with the triple the value and comfort. That's a profitable marriage. That's a done deal. Ah, oh, McCain, you've done it again. VIP guests will also visit your island in the late game with a satisfaction meter to impress them. So make sure to only select the finest segments of your island to really wow them. I'm sure the penguins will do a great job here. Excellent. Your villagers can also age if they have been on the island long enough. Just check out Anita here, still busting out his signature party tricks at negotiations. Magnificent. It is a big hit with easygoing investors. Hey, what are you trying to imply is easygoing about me here? My mustache wax routine? After your married couple has been on the block for a while, it's actually possible for them to have a baby together which grows up in the town. This is a fantastic feature in the game and I love that you can name the baby. This level of customization is really fantastic and makes the game feel very personalized. I like to combine the two names of the parents for the baby's name. Hmm, let's see here. Grace and Matt. Welcome to the world, Giat. 
but other times I couldn't resist to see if there were any limitations on the names and well, Fortnite balls. I'm gay. Night balls, I'm gay. After your child has grown enough, there is actually a chance for them to grow up and move out of the town. The animation of them just suddenly growing up in one frame is hilarious to me. I wish my puberty was over in five seconds like this villager's. Oh, look at them. They grow up so fast. We will miss you, Fortnite balls. There's even a chance that the villagers can return as an adult back to the island as they miss the town. So you're telling me there's a chance? Fortnite balls will be back for good and won't shatter my heart into a million pieces again? The prophecy is real. They have returned. I've never been so excited to see Fortnite balls in my life. Alongside children growing up and leaving, I wonder if any other type of villagers can leave the island too. Oh no, Anita Maxwin, where are you going buddy? You sure have aged a minute throughout the duration of this YouTube video. Is everything okay? How are your vitals? Did you take your pills today? Oh, that's okay. It looks like Anita Maxwin just wants to move on to a new island. Ha, <laughs> phew. I don't know what I was worried about. Former residents, I lived a really good life. Anita Maxwin, I didn't know we'd come to this. Your legacy will continue throughout this island and a statue will be risen in your honor. Recognizing your hard work, negotiating with bosses, with your party tricks. You'll never be forgotten. Oh, and some other people died too. Rip. My biggest regret of this playthrough was my villager named Mario Carroll who passed and said, I lived an okay life. I'm so sorry, Mario. Who hurt you? Was it Iris Wild? Hmm. Now that Anita has left town, I need a new negotiations master. I'm going to have to go with this villager, Barry Mysterio. I was always intrigued by this gentleman and wow, the crisscross double step. He's got some tricks of his own. I wonder if he just carries that skipping rope with him wherever he goes, just in case there's an emergency investor meeting and he just needs to whip it out. Oh my god, that's his mystery. I've got you all figured out, Mr. Mysterio. The sense of progression and things to unlock in this game is so fantastic. I mean, just look at my comparison of the island at the start of the game as a humble beginning, all the way to the end, to a bustling metropolis. I wouldn't even be able to tell that this is the same island. I just love the villager designs too, there's so many unique characters. One of my favourites here is Astro McCloud. He just oozes personality. Wait a second, Michio Tennant? That's Polly Pan from our Grand Prix story playthrough. I can never forget her and how she led our team to victory. You're always Polly Pan to me. I was only really able to dig up two minor criticisms of the game, and it was a relatively hard feat with how polished and amazing this title is. Earlier I mentioned that some notifications only pause the game the first time, but there are still countless other important announcements such as news articles and notices from the Rank Up Master that aren't skippable. In my opinion it would be great if these also had some kind of 5-10 second countdown to auto advance through the game, just so you're not having to constantly get interrupted. I mean just check out this average late game day, I mean this is a crazy amount of clicks. Some of these news announcements are great, but do, does this have to pause the game? It feels great to have a car of my own. My brother in Christ, you're riding a bicycle. Fake news. The only other minor criticism I have is the sorting system of information such as your building ranks and most income. There are hundreds of buildings you will place on your island, but there isn't a quick way to sort them by a certain value. So for example, if you want to find out how much income your aquarium makes, you just have to kind of keep scrolling through the massive list. There does seem to be sorting for the ranking, but the facilities and stores are split up into two different groups, resulting in this weird list that resets halfway through, but it is at least helpful for finding the ranks quickly. These aren't huge issues, just more so minor issues that I found could be improved on but they by no means ruin the game entirely. You'll still be able to cruise the game fine without needing to sort a list or auto advance important messages. The minor repeating messages being shown at the top right in its own section is a really good start. Well, we've come this far already. Let's go ahead and write my review of Dreamtown Island. Dreamtown Island is a hallmark achievement in Kairosoft's gaming library. This title combines the best aspects of Venture Towns and Dreamhouse Days to produce their finest game title to date, in my opinion. The amount of content in this game is massive. There is so much to unlock and so many discoverables to unveil that it will keep you surprised with new features and interactions with each playthrough. The depth of the villages and their interactions every day is immense. It's so fun watching your own villages grow throughout their entire life and be able to customize any aspect of it. The UI is notably improved in this title and the only downsides are the occasional alerts that pause your game and aren't auto skipped and not being able to sort all of the information in the massive collection of buildings. But this isn't a deal breaker. This 
is a solid 10 out of 10 and a pinnacle example of a great Kyrosoft title. Dreamtown Island as it stands is not only my favourite game of 2023, but my favourite Kyrosoft game currently released. Classic Kyrosoft grid layout games such as Hot Springs Story, Pocket Academy and Venture Towns will always hold a place in my heart, but this title combines all of those features and provides even more on top of it. Dreamtown Islands is a fantastic game with immense replay value and content. It provides so much more depth than the average Kyrosoft title that it has set a new golden standard for Kyrosoft games. So, what do you all think of Dreamtown Island? If you haven't played it yet, what did you think of it from my review? Are you going to pick it up? And if you have already played it, what are your thoughts on the title? Is it one of your favourites? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed my playthrough and review of this Kyrosoft game, please be sure to subscribe for future Kyrosoft videos. You can also join the Bow & Friends Discord to talk with other fans and for the chance to vote on what Kyrosoft game I will review next on the channel. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.